Now in SketchUp, you can generate 3D objects from text or images. And there's also an intelligent help chat bot that can help you learn too. Let's check out SketchUp AI Assistant. Hey there, it's Matt here, and I'm here to talk about SketchUp AI Assistant, which covers um, Generate Object, which uses an image or text to generate 3D objects, and then also the Help Assistant, which is kind of like a chat interface that you can use to um, get better at SketchUp and ask things, have a conversation, learn things. Um, so these are a couple new uh, tools that are in SketchUp. So um, I think they're pretty cool. There's a lot to take a look at. Um, if there's anything that I didn't cover in this video, definitely let me da know down in the comments and we can uh, address it and uh, answer it for you. Um, yeah, let's just get into it and check it out. All right, first up, where to find it. So um, on desktop, if you have 2026, oh, not settings, 2026.1 or higher, I just remembered I can do this screen zoom in thing, so I'll probably do this a lot this video. 2026.1, um, the um, AI assistant is included. If you have um, an older version down to, like if you have version 2026.0 or 2025, 2024, you can find it on the extension warehouse. So you just go here and search for AI Assistant. And this is the one right here, zoom in, <laughs> uh, that you wanna get. Um, on web, it shows up in the top bar here. Um, and this will be the same on iPad. So the first time you open it up, uh, after it's launched, you'll have this little um, dialog box. You can get to it here or over here you can find AI Assistant, then it'll show up in your toolbar or you can also customize and add it. Let's see where it is, AI Assistant. You can drag it in here like this if you want um, or you can access it over here. So I'll click in over here, AI Assistant. <laughs> and um, let's walk through the UI first. So uh, AI Assistant comes with a few things in it. Help, generate object, gallery, and credits. So we'll start off with the help. So um, this help is a, a chat bot help. Um, so you can ask, ask it anything about using SketchUp. Um, how do I use the follow me tool? Yes, yeah, so if you've used a, you know, a chat AI chat bot, like a chat GPT or something like that before you um, are familiar with this. So um, what's unique about the, the help assistant here is that this is I was going to say trained. Uh, there's apparently there's very specific AI um, nomenclature. So this is not trained on the SketchUp Help Center, but it uses a retrieval augmented generation or RAG, which basically means it only looks at the SketchUp Help Center so it can be more accurate, more up to date. Another thing that's cool about the Help Assistant is that because it's uh, using the, the SketchUp Help Center, it is available in all 12 language. 12 languages that the Help Center is localized in. So if you speak a different language that's uh, part of the Help Center, you can search in that language and it'll give you responses in your native language. So that's nice. Let's see other things it can do. So obviously how to use Follow Me Tool, that's a very like basic, simple thing. It is like a kind of a conversational tool. So let's see, pop over to this example here. What's going on in my model? Oh, let me check out the AI assistant and ask it, why is my model dark? So obviously this is not like, how do I use a tool or you know something like this, but it will go through the help center and um, identify potential reasons why my model could be too dark. Oh, let me check my shadows. Oh yeah, okay, that helped a little bit. Face orientation, okay, okay. Oh, environment, ah, I forgot about environment. Bring that up. Okay, that's looking more correct. Okay, so, um, it can help you with a, a little more, you know, abstract uh, questions or queries um, that are a little more, a little more advanced, not just super basic stuff. Um, one thing it can't do is like access information from your model, or you know, you can't say like make construction documents from my model. Like it's not going to like just generate you a full construction set. <laughs> but what it can do is tell you, kind of give you 
pointers or where to start on how you would do something like that. So it uses the help center, can't do everything, but it's, um, you know, it's kind of limited to just giving you back information that's in the chat, but um, still super helpful. And to me, this is like the instructor, what the instructor always wanted to be, you know, whatever tool you're looking for information on, it can give you a full detailed information about that. But now you can just ask it right here and it will give you back that information. Very helpful. Uh, it's right in the name, help. So it's got to be helpful. Okay. And uh, next up, uh, after our help here, we have generate object. So what generate object does is generates 3D objects. Um, it can use either, I mentioned, this is like the third time I've mentioned this in this video, <laughs> but um, you know, you can use a image or you can use a text prompt. So um, I'll show both ways to do that here. Um, obviously you can drag and drop PNG, JPEG, or um, HEIC, which is like the image for, you know, iPhones, iPads, iOS. So if you're using SketchUp on iPad, you can just use the photos right from there. Um, let me grab a photo. All right, so I have this uh, bar stool from a mood board that I would like to generate. You know, I could model this, but hey, let's check it out. Let's see how this uh, 3D generate object works for it. I wanna say here too that although you can use any photo for the the image here, I've had the best success with a solid background, solid white background, or like a PNG with transparency. So uh, for what it's worth, that's what I've had the best success with. And here you can add additional details. Like if I really wanted a specific type of, you know, material for the legs or um, a specific style, I could put that in here. But in this case, I don't really need to. And so I'm gonna go down and hit generate model. And you see this, uh, this credit icon here with a number. I'm gonna talk about that right now as I wait for this to generate. So um, what credits are is, here I'll pop over here and show you, zoom in. Uh, so credits are listed here. Credits are part of the AI services in SketchUp. So um, the help center that you saw earlier, the help bot is free, it doesn't cost you any um, credits. But I don't know if you've heard about AI, Turns out you use a lot of computing power, a lot of uh, you know, data centers and uh, GPUs, chips, what have you. You can't just run wild and you know generate a thousand 3D objects, but um, you have your credits and they're linked to your subscription. So based on which subscription you have, you have a different number of credits and they, as it says here, reset each month. So um, it will tell you, you know, how many days you have left. Right here I have resets in 28 days. As of making this video, Credits for SketchUp Go are 100 per month, SketchUp Pro are 150 per month, and then SketchUp Studio are 200 per month. If you do run out of credits, I'm not the account owner, so I have to request access to, uh, to do what I'm about to say, or if you are the account owner, it'll say something else here. <laughs> but you can get an additional subscription for uh, the AI this is called SketchUp AI subscription, which will give you more credits uh, every month. So that's why I have 1500 here because I, my account has the um, SketchUp AI subscription. Uh, so it gives you extra credits if you need them, if you don't want to wait for them to, uh, to reset. And I think that's basically everything about the credits. Um, I know credits are kind of a new thing. So if you are confused in any way, if you want any other information, let me know, certainly. And here is a nice looking stool. Let's download it and check it out. All right, so looks like it came in at the right scale. Sometimes these can be, um, you have to double check the scale on these, but this one looks pretty good. Let's check out um, the geometry in here. So I'll turn on hidden and you can see this is a, an ordered mesh here. Is there a type of name for this kind of mesh? I don't know. Um, Anyways, but it is an ordered mesh. And yeah, there you can see relatively, or you can see, you know, the, the resolution, the how many polys are in there for this particular bar stool. Um, here, I'll go select all these and show you an entity info. So this is almost 37,000 polys. Uh, this was a question that came up. Does this come in as a solid? And as you can see right now, it's not a solid or SketchUp doesn't identify this <laughs> as a solid. So I use my zoom tool here. Um, but 
uh, I've tested out a few different ones, a few different, uh, you know, downloading different or generating different objects, I should say. And um, do 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 tools, solid inspector. Um, I've found that solid inspector, like they're very close to being solid. So, you know, it has a couple things, but I just hit fix. Oh, well, in this case, <laughs> it couldn't. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, for this one, um, there are some, some discrepancies, unfortunately here, but, uh, if you're looking to use this with solid tools, might take a little bit of cleanup, but like I said, we'll take a look at a couple um, models that I did earlier and they, they were, I was able to use solid tools to clean them up and make them into uh, you know, a SketchUp solid. So I think that's basically it for this chair, huh? Um, let's check out the other way of doing it. Go back to my handy um, toolbar icon here and I'll say generate from prompt. So what should we do here? Quirky kids nightstand. I've young kids, so I feel like everything I try to come up with an idea for is kid related as this generates here. Um, so when you do from the prompt, basically it comes up with an image. I don't know if this is exactly gonna work for you. <laughs> very well, but you can always generate more images. So one thing that I want to point out is, um, you know, I am definitely this way where I'm like, oh, I don't want to spend anything unless I'm 100% sure that I like it. You don't um, like pay close attention to the, the button here. So the button, if it unless it has this, um, this icon on it and a number, the, it won't use any of your credit. So you can generate as many of these as you want, like, um, this one looks kind of cool, but I'll generate more just to show. It's like this doesn't have the icon on, you know, this button <laughs> right here doesn't have that little icon and a number. So um, this isn't going to cost me anything. I'll just say use this one. Let's check it out until I see this button. This is the one that you um, are going to be using your credits on. So um, just something to, to point out. Don't be worried about generating a bunch of different images beforehand. Um, using your prompt uh, because it's not going to use any of your credits until you actually click generate, which I will do right now. And then as we wait, um, we can talk about the other thing that you use credits for, which is um, AI render, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but you can see, so the generate object is 30 credits and then the AI render is five credits. So um, the AI render is the one that you, to take your SketchUp model viewport and you know, generate and uh, are rendering an image from that. Um, so that is five and that, that gives you three um, images output every time you uh, generate that. And then the object obviously gives you the one object. Um, so I'm going to cut the video here until this is ready. Okay, looks like we got a little raindrop underneath. Um, that wasn't expected, but let's download it and check it out. Okay, maybe a little little large here so um, as with all AI you get kind of you know different um, different levels of success based on uh, what you're going for but you know this could be everything you need anyways let me just scale this down a little bit um, so I mean, this is pretty cool for just typing in some words. Ah, yes, one thing I forgot to mention too is that um, it comes in with a PBR texture applied. So um, different maps that are generated. And so you can, so these are all PBR. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, see, so you can see that this has PBR properties and um, these are editable. Uh, so the texture is just a regular SketchUp texture that gets applied. And that's a good thing to know about how that's handled. Let's check out a couple other examples of models that I made before. So um, the last part of the UI that I didn't cover was um, in the gallery. So the gallery uh, includes the previous models that you've created. So you can go in here and re-download them or check them out, um, different ones you've done. 
this is the bus. Let's turn on hidden geometry here. Um, so you can see that the bus mesh is not as tight as this like little sculpture thing here. Essentially, it uses the same number of polys no matter how big the object is. Uh, 37,000 faces. 34,000. 33,000. Um, and hey, for good measure, let's go in this one too. 30, almost 36,000. So um, that's how many uh, polys these end up being. Um, you could use some kind of extension to make these cleaner if you wanted. Um, do I think this is going to replace all modeling? No, <laughs> of course not. I mean, these are not, uh, they're not, they're not perfect, you know? You don't want really a, a close-up view of this. Like this wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be, have this in your hero shot of your, of your um, model. But if you're really far away, you know, it gives you the markings of the bus from the, you know, particular area that you're looking for. Or like, you know, this guy adds some, um, some context, some nice uh, 3D entourage that looks good from every angle. Um, but you don't really want to get up right up next to him because uh, the illusion starts to fall apart the closer you get. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for stuff that you don't want to model, like for this, you know, if uh, like this sculpture, I wouldn't really want to model this from scratch. It's not really worth the time. And this is like, eh, this is good enough for what I'm looking for. Um, so, yeah, I say uh, check it out for yourself. See if it's something that would be worthwhile uh, to use. And if not, hey, it's another tool in the toolbox. You don't have to use it for every project, but it could come in handy right when you need it. <laughs> All right.